I'm going to show you a pretty mad game from the penultimate round of the Sinkfield Cup. Ali Reza Firuz Jar against Wesley So, the 19 year old star now representing France against Wesley So, 28 years old, and actually going into this game, Wesley So was leading the tournament at half a point clear of Ali Reza. So this game highly significant for the standings. Very tense start to Jocko Piano. Pretty orthodox so far. This time a few rounds ago we saw Ali Reza casting on the Queen side. Uh, and here he plays in a more orthodox way, uh, just casting King side. All pretty standard so far. And here um, well, the normal move is sort of a5 to preempt this expansion. Um, a6 also normal, and then a4. And now Wesley plays a5, so he's wasted a tempo in a sense because he's played this move a5 in in two moves. So why did he do this? Well, it's certainly very unusual. I think it might be perhaps to do with the fact that sometimes when white plays d4, that after this exchange, then this b4 square is available and that a5 pawn move fixes the b4 square. But it's pretty subtle and, yeah, very unusual. Bishop b6, okay, this is more normal, of course. You want to exchange off that strong light squared bishop b3 so the idea of that is well, it's just to, to hold the position actually because um, if black were to exchange here then well white is a choice but probably you'd recapture with the b pawn in order to ensure that black can't advance with d5 but there's no need for black to commit anyway. So rook e8. Bishop b2. And here Wesley decides, okay, time to break out. Um, I mean, one has to be very careful with black in playing this move because it can invite pressure on this uh, D, uh, e5 pawn. But here, after pawn takes, then bishop takes. It's actually very stable. You can see that the knight and the rook support the pawn. And yeah, this is very nice, just countering that bishop here. I think black is very comfortable. So instead of bishop b5 played, so a little bit of pressure here, and that means a little bit of pressure there. Pawn takes pawn. And well, in this position, yeah, white should definitely exchange, uh, recapture with the knight and go for this position. And, well, it's it, it it's roughly level. Uh, I mean, I think black has a pretty comfortable position, but that's the best way for white to play. But after pawn takes pawn, knight h5, that was clearly underestimated by Firuz Jar because suddenly black gets a really nice... Uh, initiative on the king side. Um, I mean, it's such a standard idea, of course, in with this pawn structure. It's it's hard to imagine how uh, Firuz Jar. Well, he wouldn't wouldn't have overlooked this, but he clearly underestimated it. I think, particularly with that bishop bearing down on the f2 pawn, because you can see that normally the bishop doesn't stand on b2 and often will come to e3 to exchange off that bishop, and then that really calms everything down on the king's side once this bishop is exchanged. Um, but this is highly dangerous for white. You can see black's pieces amassing very nicely towards the king's side. And white is in trouble here. Knight c4 played, which looks pretty normal to put some pressure here, but just queen f6. Just carrying on. And, you know, moves like knight f4. And suddenly this is threatened with queen g6 coming. Pretty straightforward attacking play. 
So Ali Reza exchanges on c6 and takes on e5. Well, maybe by this point there wasn't much better, but it is so dangerous. It really is. Um, and here Wesley takes on h3, which is strong. Might be even better to play rook d8. So this didn't happen, but this really puts enormous pressure on white. So let's say knight d3. Bishop takes b3 is a really powerful move. If queen takes, rook takes. And, well, the queen is way offside. Uh, and suddenly, well... All black's pieces are combining so well, uh, it looks dreadful. I mean, that's just one variation, and there's lots of other variations, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, what I like about rook d8 is that it, it just brings all black's pieces into the attack and gains time against the queen and really leaves white struggling. Bishop takes h3, also very good. Um, if that's taken... Then rook takes. I mean, this is devastating. Uh, this this rook is entering the in, entering the attack as well. Knight f4 coming, and if knight takes, well, that's a pretty clear checkmate. So knight d3 played, and once again, rook d8 is a very powerful move. That's that's a nasty pin. But queen g6 played, and threatening mate. It's actually inaccurate. Knight h4, defends against the mate, hits the queen. Queen g5, knight takes. Queen takes h4. Rook, in fact, rook d8 was still possible in that position, not quite as good as before. Um, pawn takes. And here, um, queen g5 check. Rook e5, also very interesting. Um, but queen g5 check played by Wesley, and, and really the crisis has passed now. This is not too bad for white. Once you get the queen over to defend the king, and some pieces have been exchanged from the board, then actually white is, is just about okay here. c4. So that bishop finally gets into the game. And now Wesley plays what looks like a pretty natural move. Rook b8. Put some pressure here. Um, it's also possible to play queen g5. I mean, black isn't in any danger here. Um, it, it, it's pretty safe just to bring the queen over to play an endgame. But rook b8, also not bad, but it gets a bit tricky now. e5 played, and suddenly this just turns the tables on black. So why e5? Well, you can see the queen was defending the knight. But now queen takes knight is threatened as the, as the pawn blocks the defense. That knight is in a little bit of trouble. Here Wesley played g6, which is a big error. He could have played rook takes b3. And now there's a forced sequence. Bishop d4. Queen takes here. Bishop e3. So now forced uh, forces an exchange of queens. You can see that that knight is trapped. Rook takes. And you can see that black has a stack of pawns for the piece. I mean, in all likelihood, this will, this will end up in a rook and bishop against rook endgame. I imagine it will end up a, as a draw. So that was still possible. Um... And, that, and that's a pretty forced sequence, actually. You know, the rook attacking the bishop. So, yeah, if queen takes knight, then rook takes bishop. But, yeah, this, this wins a piece by force. Um, but black should be okay. But instead, Wesley played g6, and this is a big error. First of all, a very important move. It's possible that Wesley... I, I mean, I don't know. But who, who knows what he, what he overlooked? But after bishop a3... The queen is sidelined. It has to drop back to b6. And now e6, well, we had a variation 
uh, not too long ago, where there was a white queen on b3 and black was attacking down here. Well, now we've got a black queen on b6 and suddenly the tables have turned completely. It's white that's attacking on the king side. You can see, once again, it's a queen in Siberia, just way out of the action. And black is really struggling here. You can see that white threatens to open the position with pawn takes pawn check. If knight f6, then a very simple move, queen f4, attacking the knight, attacking the pawn here. Well, the, the big problem is the knight, and if the knight moves, obviously f7 caves in. And actually, it's not really possible to defend that knight satisfactorily. So c5 played by Wesley, he's blocking out that bishop. But pawn takes pawn check anyway is very powerful. And now there is a killer move from white. Can you spot it? Okay. I'll have my customary slurp of tea. You have a little think. Cheers. The move is queen d5. Threatening bishop takes pawn check. Very simple, so that brings the bishop back into the game. King g7, bishop takes c5. And now, well, the queen is attacked. If queen f6, bishop d4 is pretty obvious. If queen a6, then queen d7, check, and then you take here. So black is completely lost if knight f... Well, this is the game continuation. Knight f6. Bishop takes queen, and now a very simple simplification of the position. And here, Wesley resigned. Why did Wesley resign? Well, this rook has to be taken. So rook takes rook. Then bishop takes pawn. At the moment, white is two pawns ahead, and the knight is attacked. And let's say knight f4. Then just bishop takes c7. So now it's three pawns ahead. Taking here doesn't have much effect. You get out of check and then you start pushing these pawns down the board. I mean, it's utterly lost. Um, and coming back here, if knight b6, in fact, there's no need to exchange off bishop for knight here. You can just play rook d1. And sooner or later, well, c5 is coming. You can sometimes take here and play rook d6. White is two pawns up with a dominating position, so no wonder Wesley resigned. Well, that was a very strange game, because if we go back to this point, and bishop takes h3, I mean, you could say that black is actually winning this position. Um, there was bishop takes h3 and the game is strong, rook d8 is, is also very strong. Uh, I mean, such a beautiful attacking position for Black. I mean, it's incredible that Wesley didn't manage to put this one away. So Ali Reza had a bit of luck. But when his chance came, he seized it very well. So that means with one round to go in the lead, we have Jan Nipomnishi with four and a half, Ali Reza Firuz Ja with four and a half. Caruana also has four and a half, but he's his tournament is over. He's finished. He gets a bye in the last round because Carlson withdrew, of course. So last round pairings. Firuzja and Nepo sharing the lead with one game to go in the last round. Firuzja has black against Maxime Vachilagrave. And Nepo has white against Hans Niemann, who has rather collapsed. He's lost a, uh, two games in the last three rounds. So Nepo with white, I think, has a good chance to win the tournament. How will Ali Reza get on with black against MVL? So it's going to be a fascinating last round. Uh, I'll be reporting back. I'll let you know what happens. Uh, you can always... Check out live commentary on Chess24 on in the St. Louis official site as well. Um, anyway, I'll report back. Thanks for watching.